Innocent lives matter. So, you think Brian Koberger's innocent? <laughs> yeah. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Crime Circus. My name's Drip Drop, and I'll be your host as always. Mm -hmm. This is a brand new, first of its kind debut series, Innocent Lives Matter. And episode one features Franklin Tyrone Tucker, AKA Ty. Tyrone's actually factually innocent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyways, this case takes place in Key West, Florida, where all of your fantasies can come true, and so much more. You might get your heart broken while you're there, and you might even fall in love. <laughs> this passing away crime took place at a residence known as the Treehouse. It's directly across the street from a CVS. And there's three alleged defendants in this case, as you see on the screen right here. Tyrone, Travis, and Rory. You'll be hearing more about all of this as we work our way through this video, because this is a true deep dive. You like true crime and you like investigations? You're in the right place. If you're new, welcome. If you've been with me and you support me, thank you so much. Facts, facts, facts. That's what you get here at Crime Circus, and you know that's true. Yeah. Over six years ago, Franklin Tyrone Tucker, a.k.a. Ty, was arrested for a crime he did not commit. Two individuals were stabbed, a man passed away, and a woman survived. And the survivor says he didn't do it. And we believe her. After spending two years in the county jail awaiting trial, Ty was bonded out on $2 million, courtesy of his brand new lovely wife who came to his rescue and she fell in love with him while he was incarcerated. Shout out to Lauren, nobody deserves to see a loved one go through this. Ty has maintained his innocence since day one, and now it's approximately day 2,275. And while awaiting trial, Tyrone turned down a plea deal of time served. There's no guilty man that'll turn down that deal. No. Ladies and gentlemen, innocent lives matter, and you know that's true. So, moving right along. Tyrone's been out on bond for four years. It's six years since the crime, and just weeks ago, he defended himself in a super scary courtroom against super scary demons. And the things that we saw in that courtroom were sus to us, which is why the jury was hung. So at least one person on that jury had a brain cell. And the state immediately demanded a retrial. So Ty will be defending himself again in just a few weeks. Oh my God. And just the fact that the state can re-prosecute you as many times as it wants is crazy. Crazy. A hung jury should be as good as a not guilty verdict. Seriously, no matter how many trials or attempts it takes, the state can keep retrying you as many times as it wants. That's a huge red flag and that should be super alarming to every one of us. The state seems more focused on winning than actual real justice. There's absolutely zero evidence in this case against Tyrone, and I've looked through the entire case file. You think there's a lack of evidence against Brian Koberger? Hmm. Well, against Tyrone Tucker, there's absolutely zero evidence. No cell phone pings. No DNA. No white Elantra circling the victim's house. Nothing. The surviving victim says he didn't do it, so what more do you need to know? How do you know that the second assailant was not Tyrone? No, it's not, it's not Tyrone. It was not Tyrone's voice. I know Tyrone's voice. Some of you might not care, but this is a disgusting attack on all of our freedoms. And you might just care if this happens to one of your loved ones. Mm. And then it'll be too late. So we need to save this man's life and we need to save it now. Which is why I've spent the last month of my life making this documentary. We can't just sit back and do nothing and allow innocent humans to be put inside cages. No. So, moving right along. Please grab a snack, sit down, relax, get comfortable, and get ready to watch this video with me. Yeah, I'm gonna be right here watching it with you, and don't you dare skip a single second of this video. As usual, I'll be seeing you again a little later on in this video. Now, without further ado, let's see what Tyrone has to say for himself this time. Turn, face the clerk, raise your... No, no, just raise your right hand, oh, face right, the right, clerk. Right, sorry, you, yes. you, <laughs> like every, you, uh, you've already cleared security like everybody else here, so you're good, just we want to put you under oath like every other witness. Do you solemnly swear or affirm that the testimony you will give and the cause now in hearing shall be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? 
All right, please have a seat on the witness stand. All right, so first of all, would you state your name? Uh, Franklin Tyrone Tucker. All right, so as you all know, Mr. Tucker's acting as his own attorney. So in this particular direct examination, he is being allowed to testify in narrative form. Rather than asking himself questions and then giving an answer, uh, he's just going to testify as a narrative. So you can proceed. Okay. Um. Yeah, it's a little weird. Not exactly expected, guys. I'm sorry about that. But I, I guess uh, guess we're going to start. Uh, I think the best place to probably to start is probably around Hurricane Irma. That would probably be the best way to go. Um, I had been in Key West for I don't know a while. Been a probably a couple of years. Uh, been working on boats. Uh, originally, before the storm happened, I got myself a boat. Actually, I had three at one point. But uh, you know, doing the whole. The idea was to uh, was it sail sail the Caribbean. You know, eventually island hop my way down to Venezuela and then go to you know, South America, go up the, the mouth of the Amazon. Um, didn't happen. You know, uh, obviously Irma did a lot of damage. I mean, I'm sure some of you were here and remember. Tonight, devastation in Key West after a direct hit from Hurricane Irma. Water swallowing streets. Overnight, power lines sparking. Many who stayed behind, like Zach Zilkakis, now in the dark. We're not sure what's out there. We're not sure what we're going to see when we open the door. Um, but the thing is, is I didn't evacuate um, when that happened. And eventually, um, just prior to this incident happening, um, I was working doing hurricane cleanup. You know, there wasn't very many of us here. Um, a lot of people had evacuated, you know, so there wasn't too many people here to do that kind of work. Not that it was my normal thing, but... Um, but yeah, I mean, I was getting paid pretty good money, um, to be honest. It was, uh, you know, they had uh, some of the more wealthy neighborhoods that were up in the Big Pine area. Uh, they had people who wanted their, their roofs blue tarped. I don't know if you guys know what that is, but they wanted their roofs blue tarped. And they were paying me $300 an hour to get up there. And at the time, I mean, I was like $300 an hour. I'm up there. No problem, you know. Um, so, you know, that's pretty good money for that time, right? And... Um, Yes, I did stay at COTS at, you know, certain points, you know, just because, you know, like, you know, like many people at that time, you know, a lot of us, if you want to say homeless, I guess that is the word. But the thing is, is a lot of people were homeless at that point. A lot of people lost their boats. A lot of people lost their houses, lost their homes. Wasn't exact, I wasn't exactly special that way. You get so used to seeing things a certain way. <laughs> And that it's, it's just gone. I mean, I, look, I have a tendency to drink more when I come to Key West than any place else I've ever lived, I ever live. So, yeah, I have a tendency to drink more when I'm down here. And this one day, you know, and this is about the best I could recollect, is, you know, I remember, I remember that day I was drinking Fireball with Travis, right? So I know, man, I know I had been drinking that day. And I know I went into the bedroom um, which is, again, CJ and Michelle's room. And I know, so this is during the time period where I'm watching it for them. Um, you know, so I remember that. And I don't remember much else about the day, except I do remember, I do remember at one point, um, this is, it's got to be later on in the evening, and I wake up and I'm out, of, I'm out of cigarettes, right? And I wake up and I, I get, you know, and Travis is actually there, Right. So I go and I walk to Tom Thumb you know, to get cigarettes and I go over there to get cigarettes and I come back. And, by, and when we were up there, when we were up at Tom Thumb, right, I remember looking and I'm like, I could look up, okay, there's the fire stations right there and then you can see Laurel Avenue where this happened, right? You can see Laurel Avenue from there. And I could see the cop lights up there, right? I could see a bunch of cop lights up there. And I remember saying to Travis, I was like, man, I wonder what happened up there. Right. And it's like, you know, and the thing is, is, again, you know, I'm not in dark clothing. I am in shorts. I am wearing sandals. I am wearing, you know, normal people clothes. Right. I guess normal, I guess I should say normal for Key West. Right. Um, but anyway, yes. I, and, and Mr. Mansfield alluded to this. You know, I did have a nice big long goatee. And, you know, I had, you know, Lord knows I have tattoos when I take off my suit. Oh my God. Um, you know, but the bottom line is, is, you know, I planned on living on boats and I guess I was living the, I was living that lifestyle. It's like, um, you know, I planned, like I said, I planned on sailing off into the sunset and, you know, and just enjoying my life and kind of traveling, you know, 
Um, and, you know, so I, I, I kind of look like a little savage. I'm not going to say I didn't, you know. Um, it's like, uh, you know, us boat people, we kind of had a, you know, have a style, I guess. I don't know what it is. And, you know, and, yeah, it's kind of a freer way of living, I guess. Anyway, but beside the point. Um, so get, getting back to that night, I remember looking up down Laurel Avenue and seeing the lights, right? By the time we got back, right, so it's not a very far walk from Tom Thumb to the warehouse. But by the time we got back there, there were cop cars everywhere. I mean, it, it, you know, I'd never seen anything like that on Stock Island, right? I mean, you know, literally, you had the FWC, Border Patrol, you know, there's police everywhere, and they're just, they're, they're going everywhere, right? And, you know, there's police sirens everywhere. And I remember, you know, we went, you know, we went back inside, and I think Travis did, he, I think Travis did buy like, like a 12-pack of beer or something like that, right? And uh, we go back inside, and I remember you could see, again, there's a bunch of these cop cars that went down into what they call, they, you know, they call it Little Haiti there, right? Um, it's a bunch of trailers and, you know, and yes, it's before you get to the hogfish, right? Um, that, that road there. And I remember there's a bunch of cop cars that, man, are, you're going down into that neighborhood, right? And I'm like, damn, I wonder what, you know, what those guys did. I'm like, you know, I mean, whatever it is, they want them bad, you know, so... And I think I said that to Travis, I'm not sure. Oh, and by the way, when we got back, that was the other thing, uh, Big Scott was waiting for us. Uh, when we got back, I remember that too. Because, okay, I know Travis, he testified that he, you know, he had the key to the door. Him and Murray Wilson were the only ones with the keys to the door, right? So, uh, you know, Big Scott was waiting outside for us, right? And because he couldn't get inside, right? He couldn't get in the door, right? So anyway, so we go upstairs and, you know, and... When I saw all that stuff out the window, you got to remember, I'm still a little bit lit. You know, I, I managed to walk my butt down to the, the Tom Thumb, but, I, you know, I wasn't going much farther than that. Let's see, I go from there, and I just, yeah, I remember Big Scott and Travis were going to go, and they were going to go hang out on the front porch downstairs and watch the cop cars go by, you know, just see what was up. You know, they're going to drink beer on the porch and watch the cop cars. I'm like, okay, you know, I'm going back to bed, you know, because I was like, you know, like, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm still not good, right? So I went and I went back in and I passed out and then in the bed, right? And when, and uh, was it CJ and Michelle's room, right? So I pass out in there. And from what I understand, you know, again, I, I, I can't, you know, I can't really, you know, say, except for I've seen it on video now. I mean, I've seen it on video as far as some of this stuff. But um, while I was upstairs and I'm passed out in there, um, this is where, you know, I, you know, this, okay, to clarify, when I went to go get cigarettes at Tom Thumb, right, it has to be sometime after the Florida Electric Key, Florida Keys Electric video that you see there, right? It has to be sometime after that. Um, I don't know when, but, you know, unfortunately, that's all we have for video. So I don't know. I just know that, you know, it had to be some time after that. Um, because, like I said, Travis is already there. So it's like, okay, I know it has to be there, right? Um, so anyway, so I don't know exactly, you know, what time. You know, I couldn't tell you exactly what time. I do know that, yes, you know, it would have been helpful if we had the video from Tom Thumb. Judge, can, um, can we come to the sidebar? Oh, okay. Yeah. So. I'm going to, okay, back to, I guess, back to where we are with the story. Um, so, again, I'm passed out in the bed, and somewhere along the lines, again, the, the police show up at the house is because, okay, you know, this was told to me by, by Travis and Big Scott. Okay. okay. So we'll sustain the objection. Okay. Well, I get woke up along the line somewhere along the night. I don't remember when, but I, I remember, man, I get woken up in the middle of the night. And uh, cause oh, when I, when they went downstairs to go and check this out, right. I remember telling them, I was like, I'm going to go to sleep, man. And I'm like, okay, tell me what happened later. You know, just tell me what happened. Cause I mean, it is kind of a big deal, you know? 
So uh, anyway, so I go pass out, and somewhere along the night, you know, I wake up, man, and uh, Rory Wilson is there, you know, and Travis is there, and Big Scott's there. And, you know, I mean, we're drinking, and yeah, you know, I'm refogging my brain at this point. So anyway, so after that, um, let's see, because, okay, like I said, you know, again, I had a tendency around Fantasy Fest. It was usually a couple weeks worth of partying, man, during Fantasy Fest is usually what it was for me, you know. Um, but, I don't, you know, I don't remember much, man, as far as the next day. I don't really remember too much as far as that went. Um, you know, I do remember, okay, this is one thing I do remember. I go, because, again, it starts, to, you know, it's been many years, and I can't really tell you guys, man, you know, exactly, because it has been years, and I'm trying to, you know, my best to remember here. Um, but I do remember there's a point that comes in there where we have two detectives that show up at the door, right? Um, and they come, they come to, the, the, to the front door. And I open the door for them. You know, I, I literally open the door for them. And, um, and it, you know, I know now who they are. You know, I mean, I'm sure they introduced themselves at the time. I just don't remember them introducing themselves. But it was uh, Detective Smith and Detective Fernandez, right? And now, now don't get me wrong. I knew they were detectives because they're not wearing uniforms and they've got their badge on their, on their belt, right? So the thing is, is okay, so I know they're detectives, right? And they start asking me questions about Rory Wilson, right? And now I know Rory, I mean, I don't, it's not like we hang out all the time, it's not like I know him, you know, I know him that well, right? But I, I know him, right? And, um, but they're asking me questions like, okay, you know, they're asking me, you know, is he a drug dealer? Um, you know, they're asking me, you know, stuff like that, right? And I'm like, well, not that I know of. You know, I know, I know he has a job, you know. I mean, I know he has a pregnant girlfriend. I know that, you know. Um, but, you know, they're asking me a bunch of different questions, right? You know, I even gave him, you know, Rory's phone number. I was like, you know, if you want to contact him, here, I'll give you, I'll give you, give you his number, right? And um, I remember Rory uh, after that, man, it's like, uh, you know, sorry, it's weird. <gasps> But he, he texts me right after they leave. And I, because I also told him that, that Rory's door is around the other side of the building, right? It's actually on the back side of the building. He has like a front door that's all his own, right? And I told him about that. And it's like, uh, so anyway, again, you know, it's, it's a little fuzzy here, but I do remember Rory texting me not long after they left, right? And, you know, it's like, he's like, you know, cops. I'll sustain the objection. Okay. Well, anyway. So um, I do remember, you know, telling Rory, I go to, I go to, you know, him because they left me a card, right? And I go knock on his door and I give him the card, right? And I said, look, man, these are not, these are not, these aren't uniformed officers. These are detectives, man. I'm like, you know, and they, they were asking me some questions about you and you might want to give them a call. You know what I mean? Um, so anyway, so that's what I tell him and I give him the card, right? And after that, let's see. Trying to remember anything important after that. Okay, after that, I don't, again, I don't remember too much. Oh, because well, it wasn't too long after that that where, where they come in and they do this raid. But okay, prior to the raid, I remember this. It's uh, Thanksgiving time, right? So it's around Thanksgiving, right? And I remember DeLuna's had, had like a Thanksgiving dinner, like a free Thanksgiving dinner or something like that, right? And, you know, I like DeLuna's, <laughs> and so I went over there for that. And I think this would be the 21st. I, I would have to say it's the 21st because actually, you know, I know it's the 21st now. Okay, so it's the 21st, right? And, you know, I go, and, you know, I was a little sketched out by, man, the detective showing up there, you know, because, look, you know, the warehouse, you know, like I said, Rory Wilson, you know, and, and April had cops come there many times, right? And look, it's only a matter of time before you're, you're going to get caught up in something, right? So I didn't want to stay there very long. And I actually told CJ and Michelle this, right? I'm like, you know, I, you know, I'm trying to be a friend here, but at the same time, I'm not trying to hang out here too long, right? And um, so anyway, so I remember, you know, the raid at the warehouse, now that's what I think. That's what Travis called it. I don't, you know, I don't know what you actually call it, but that night, uh, you know, okay, I went to Deluna's, went and did the whole dinner thing, and this is when I first, I first heard about what had happened up at the, up at the treehouse, right? I hear 
through a friend of mine, Janice. We were having dinner that night, you know, at the DeLuna's thing. And uh, she told me that... Objection to hearsay. Oh. Okay, I was informed. The objection in terms of the details. Oh, I was informed that, you know, somebody got stabbed in the parking lot up at CVS. That's what I was informed of, right? And uh, so that was my first, you know, hearing of this. Um, anyway, so, but that same night is when this, this thing happens as far as the whole raid thing. And uh, I'm telling you, it's the stupidest thing I ever did, man, this whole thing. Because, okay, they come in, and I'm upstairs, and I'm literally in C.J. Michelle's room, and I had a laptop, you know, kind of like I do now, but I had a laptop, and I was watching TV on the laptop, right? And I was just getting ready, you know, watching, you know, another show. And when they came in, the way that place was laid out, they had, like, um, because it was an old warehouse, right? So they had the one I was in, you could literally see to downstairs, right? It had like a plexiglass window that went across one of the walls. I imagine it was like an old supervisor, you know, like an old supervisor office or something. But uh, you could look down and you could actually see right downstairs, right? And I hear a bunch of, you know, a bunch of commotion down there. And I look down, you know, from the plexiglass, you know, the window, and I could see the cops banging on the door. Right, they're actually, because, okay, it's two separate, you know, Lori's got his in the back, there's this big storage room, and then there's, like, the stairs that go up to the other, the other, I don't want to say apartments, but the other rooms where people were renting, right? And uh, so they're banging on the door, right? And they've got a battering ram, there's boom, boom, and then I see they've got ski masks on, they've got assault rifles, there's smoke, I mean, I mean, literally, I mean, it, I look down there and I'm just like, oh, my God, right? And um, so anyway... Do the dumbest thing that you could possibly ever do. I, I literally, I go out of CJ and Michelle's room and I come walking down the stairs with my hands up, looking like an idiot because I'm sitting there going, I, I'll, I'll open the door, just don't shoot. Like they can see me. You know, it's like, you know, so as soon as I open the door, the next thing you know, I've got an assault rifle in my nose, right? And uh, they're leading me out. And, you know, literally I'm, I'm like whipped around, handcuffs on and taken out to a squad car, right? And it's like, and I remember, I remember him. One thing I didn't like is I remember as I was going by, seeing Rory Wilson's uh, girlfriend on her stomach. Now I'm look, April and I didn't like each other. That's true, but she was eight months pregnant, and seeing her on her belly on the ground did not make me happy. Um, but they take me out to the squad car, and I am literally, I'm like, I'm, I have no idea what's going on. I'm, I'm literally sitting out. You guys have a warrant, you know? Am I being detained? Am I arrested? I mean, you know, the whole thing. I have no idea why I'm being taken out to the squad car, or why even any of this is happening, right? I mean, you know. But but based on what the detectives told me that it showed up there a few days earlier, I guess. Um, based on what they told me, I thought it was over. Oh, I didn't know, but I just know that man. They came in. You know, they're coming in like that. They've got a reason. You know, if they're coming in like that. And, um, you know, I, you know, so I'm way confused at this point. I have no idea what, what's going on. And um, I'm sitting in the back of a squad car, and they left me out there for a while, you know, and I'm still, I, I have no idea. I'm, and eventually somebody got in the, in the driver's seat. I don't remember who it was, but somebody gets in the driver's seat. And, you know, I'm literally trying to, I'm asking them a bunch of questions. I'm like, you know, I'm trying to figure out what the hell's going on. And so, you know, Eventually, they tell me they want to take me down to the station. And I'm like, well, look, I don't have a shirt on. I don't have shoes on. You know, I, I don't even know what this is over. You know, I'm like, am I being arrested? You know, any of that stuff, right? And um, no, you know, it ends up, it actually is Detective Pitcher. He goes and uh, he gets me a shirt. It's a, um, like a camouflage shirt, but he gets it from David Gross's room, right? And he brings it down so I at least have a shirt on, right? And um, so they take me down to the station. Right. And when they take me down the station, I'm trying, you know, this again, this is, this is, you know, it's pretty traumatic. I'm not going to say it's not. It's pretty traumatic when that kind of stuff happens. Um, but anyway, not that I've been through it, you know, I've been through it a bunch of times, but I mean, I just, like I said, I'm, I'm lucky I didn't get shot going down the stairs. Anyway, so at bottom line is they take me into the station. And when they take me in the station, let's see, I don't remember who it was that, that, that brought me in. I know they put they bring me in and they put me in an interrogation room, right? And um, when I when they first start talking to me, you know, they first start talking to me. I'm like, you know, again, I'm wondering why I'm here. I'm objecting to his, his testifying to his statements made back then. I just said I was wondering why. I'm telling you my thought, you know. I understand, but in terms of the uh, 
uh, statements that you made at that time, I would sustain the objection. Are you talking about uh, what I would tell the police? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, I, I'll leave that out then. I'm sorry, I didn't, I didn't understand. Um, I'll leave that part of the story out. Man, I ain't got nothing to hide. That's why I'm in a freaking bad. Otherwise, it would have been like, man, if I thought I needed an attorney, I would have been like, look, I need a lawyer. You yeah. know what I mean? But I know I haven't done anything. Yeah. Um, anyway, so I go into the interrogation room. And at first, you know, they're questioning me. And I, I'm thinking at the time, I'm like thinking, okay, remember I said I thought it was over, right? So, and then, you know, they're asking me these questions. And, you know, first, that's what I thought they were going to, you know, they, you know, again, they're asking me because, they, you know, they want to know information, right? So, uh, but then it comes around to the murder. Somewhere's in there, right? And they start asking me questions about it. And um, again, I'm thinking, again, okay, they asked me what I knew, what I knew about it, that kind of stuff. Um, I'm sorry, I don't want to you know, testify to what they what they asked me. But you know, but at the time, I remember thinking, you know, they just wanted information from me, right? They just want to know what I, you know, what I what I know, what I've heard, you know, that kind of thing. But somewhere along the lines in there. And, uh, you know, it became very clear they thought I had something to do with this, right? And, um, oh, it, you know, I remember, oh, wait, wait a second, because I got I'm forgetting about a part here. They, okay, they take me out of the interrogation room at some point, and they take me down, they put me in a squad car, right? And I'm still in, I'm still in handcuffs, right? So I'm still in handcuffs. But they put me in the squad car, and they leave me down in the squad car for, I don't know how long. It had to be like an hour. I don't, I have no idea, you know, but I was in the squad car. And then they bring me back up and they ask me a bunch more questions, right? And, um, you know, like I said, they, now, now it's, they, they, you, know, you know, I'm getting this feeling. I'm like, okay, wait a second. You know, they're not asking me because they think, you know, because they, they just want information. They, they think I had something to do with this thing, right? And, um, yeah, at the time I remember, you know, that they went to that direction. And, you know, again, I'm very adamant. I get very adamant once I realize this. I'm like, oh, no, <laughs> you know. Um, but yeah, so I, you know, I, I don't know if I can testify to what I said, but I remember, you know, saying to, you know, to them, I was like, Objection you know, to what he said. Yeah. I mean, okay. And I won't say what I said then. That's why I'm in a freaking bad. Otherwise it would have been like me. But I will say this. I was very adamant about, you know, not having anything to do with it. And straight up test away. Because man, freaking, I'm confident, man, it'll, it'll exonerate me. It'll exonerate me. Um, so eventually it gets down to the point where, I've been interrogated all night, all night over this thing. And, um, and it, it got to a point, I mean, you know, I was like, look, you know, I'm like, you know, are you going to arrest me? You know, are you, are you actually going to arrest me? Or, or, you know, am I free to go? Can I get, you know, look, I, I'm tired of being here. I'm tired of saying the same, man, you know, giving these answers. You know, can I go home or are you going to arrest me for this thing? And um, they, let, they let me go, right? And um, not only did they let me go... <laughs> I think the bad part about that is they made me walk home. And I remember uh, the directive was to, uh, was it, check out the cameras, how many cameras there were, right? And, uh, oh, and they did give me, I'll give them this, they gave me slides, because remember I told you I didn't have any shoes. They gave me slides, right? Uh, the, you know, was it the stuff they use in jail, the slides, right? Um, kind of like flip-flops. Anyway, so they gave me those and sent me on my way. So now i got to walk all the way home, which, you know, okay, that's, that's, it's a little distance, you know. And so I walked there, and I probably got there, I don't know. I probably got there like 5 or 6 o'clock in the morning. It was early in the morning, and I'd been there all night, right? And um, when I get there, you know, the door is locked. And as we, you know, we've said, you know, I didn't have a key, right? So, and my, but my stuff is still in there. Now I'm freaked out. I got I to tell you, I'm freaked out. You know, because, okay, when they, you know, again, that, 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 I've never had that happen. Right. So I'm freaked out about the thing. And when you know, I get there, doors locked. And I remember I had to throw rocks up at the windows to finally get Travis to come down and open the door. Right. So he, he comes down, he opens up the door and I tell him what happened. You know, I was like, I just tell him what happened to me. I was like, I can't believe it. You know, I, 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 you know, I can't believe they took me down there. Blah, blah, blah. You know, this, you know, this, that. And that right. So anyway, so but I don't want to stay there. I don't want to stay there. I'm like, okay, this is way more than I, you know, this is way more than I want, right? So I get, you know, I get my stuff together and I literally grab all my stuff and I tell CJ Michelle, I called up CJ Michelle and I was like, look, you know, look, it's all good, you know, you guys, man, but I, I can't stay here. You know what I'm saying? I can't stay here anymore. 
And um, I remember them asking me if I would at least grab, like they had family photos and pictures of kids and stuff like that. And they asked me if I would grab that and take it down to Burger King and drop it off there, right? I was like, yes, I can at least do that for you, you know? So um, I grabbed a bunch of the pictures, man, from their room, and I tried to grab, you know, anything, you know, that, that, that could be a value or, or a sentimental value to them, right? Because now I'm leaving, and I'm not, you know, I'm not staying there. And um, so, yeah, I grab all, all that. I put it into a bag for them, and I grab my stuff, and I, I head on out, and I go ahead. And this is, I don't know, it's a... Uh, I mean, I, I don't remember what time of day it is. I know it's it's morning, you know. I mean, like I said, I got there probably like 5, 6 o'clock, so I don't remember how long it took them to open the door or anything like that. Um, but I did grab, you know, some stuff, dropped it off at Burger King, and um, I do remember I called two people that day. I called uh, my friend Cliff, and I called one of my brothers, Jeff. You know, he's not blood-related brother, but he is my brother in every sense. Um but yes, so I go ahead and I call them because I'm freaked out, right? Because I knew when they, when they let me go, I knew that, okay, they let me go. But I got the distinct impression that, man, you know, no, they thought I had something to do with this. And they were, you know, I, this was not going to be the last time that, you know, they, they talked to me about this. And, um, you know, I was scared. I'm going to tell you, I was I mean, straight up, I was scared. You know, I didn't know what was going on. And I was like, and you no, know, I can't explain to anybody, you know, the feeling. But I was scared, so that's why I called them up because I was looking. I was like, "Look, man, everything in him. I mean, everything." Objection to what he was telling these people. Oh, I'm talking about my my head. All right. Um, but anyway, anyway, in my mind at that point, um, yeah, I mean, everything was telling me, man. It's like you need to get <coughs> you need to get out of here, right? I mean, these people, man, they, you know, they're, they 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 think you had something to do with this, and uh, but then you know, the other side of me is going, if if I if I take off, they're going to think I did it. You know, so, I mean, I have this little war going on in my head. And um, anyway, so I went from Burger King and I started walking down towards Key West, right? To, you know, because there's that little bridge and you know, park and stuff there. And uh, I remember as I came across the bridge, there was a couple guys there and they're drinking off of, man, uh, they're drinking off a, a liter of skull or whatever. You know, it's the, the rock gut vodka. And uh, at that point, I was like, yeah, I need one. And I was like, I was like, you know. You might, you know, so I sat there with them, took a couple hits off that, and I eventually end up down at McDonald's, right? And uh, when I get down to McDonald's, and, and I'm still sketched out, I, I'm, I'm sketched out about the whole thing, and I don't know what to do, to be honest. I just don't know what to do. It's like, man, I, I've never found myself in this position before. I don't know what to do. So anyway, so um, I get on, you know, because I, I went to McDonald's because they had free Wi-Fi there, right? So I could get on my laptop because I always had a laptop in my backpack, right? Um, so, you know, I get on my laptop and I'm not even sure what I'm doing, to be honest. I really wasn't sure on what I was doing at that point. I was just, I didn't know. So, um, anyway, but that's when Paula shows up and Paula, Paula and I, you know, we weren't friends, right? Um, but, but we knew each other. It's like, it's one of those things, you know, small Island and, you know, it's, and we look, we know who lives in the neighborhood. We know who, who, who lives on the Island. You know, it's like you, you run into each other. Hey, you know, how you doing? How's it going? You know, that kind of thing. But, but I don't know that much about her. You know what I mean? Um, you know, so anyway, so I run into Paula and I remember cause I was feeling so bad and so sorry for myself for man being interrogated, you know, for overnight, you know, being interrogated for this thing all night and I'm scared and I'm feeling sorry for myself, I guess. Right. And I remember seeing Paula and she had the, um, she had a bandage on her neck from, from the night. Right. And, um, and I remember seeing her and I was just like, and all of a sudden I felt like such a, I mean, I was, I'm not trying to curse, I guess, um, but I, I felt, I felt really bad, right? Because I was like, here I am feeling sorry for myself. And then I see, I see her, right? And I, uh, she's bruised up and she has the thing on her neck and, and it's like, and uh, when, you know, and I, to I told her what happened to me. I told her that they took me down to the station. I told her, you know, what happened. And, um. The thing is, is uh, Paula, you know, Paula, yes, she did cry. And yes, she did, you know, cry on my shoulder. And, you know, and I, and I told you, I felt, I felt horrible because it was just like, I felt, it's like, again, here I am feeling bad because they grilled me all night. And then I saw and heard from her, her experience, right? And um, no, I just felt bad about it. It's like, okay, you know, here I am. Again, I guess it's the somebody always has something worse thing. You know, there's always... Objection to the self-serving statements, Judge. 
right. I'll overrule the objection. You Thank can you, continue. Your Honor. Anyway, anyway, so it was definitely, again, while I was still not certain about what was going to happen here, you know, but it definitely put me in a different mindset to see her, right? And, um, but anyway, so after I saw her, I remember I went back to Cots because now I'm going to Cots and I'm, you know, I'm not going back to the warehouse. I don't want nothing to do with it, right? So I go back to Cots and, you know, they had a, again, another little Thanksgiving dinner thing there. And, you know, I, I had some of that, you know, whatever. And then I went into where the bunk is. And this is when I get arrested, right? And uh, when I got arrested, you know, because, you know, Detective Pitcher was the, you know, one of the ones who talked to me when they were doing their interviews. And uh, I remember him leading the charge, but there was, there was a good amount of officers, and they were coming in from both sides. And uh, I remember looking up at him, and I was like, I was like, I guess we're not talking now, are we? And he's like, he's like, no. And uh, so anyway, so they arrest me, and they take me over to the jail, right? And I'm, I'm, and I'm, and the whole time I'm kind of flipping, and I'm like, literally, like I'm like, I didn't have, I'm like telling him I didn't have anything to do with this, and um. You know, and so I'm telling him this stuff, and somewhere along the lines, I get told that it's about witness tamper, right? And I'm like, uh, I thought it was over Paula. I thought it was because I talked to her at McDonald's, and I was like, nobody told me I could, I couldn't talk to her, right? Why don't you step out, all right? All right, Ty. Right now, you're being charged with witness tampering. Okay. All right. And right now, we're in the process of receiving warrants for murder, robbery, and aggravated Why? battery. What's that? Uh, for everything we talked about last night? Yeah, but I didn't do any of that. What's that? I didn't do any of that. Um, you know, if you're talking about, man, witness tamper, man, man, when I ran into Paula today, fucking over at man McDonald's, is that what you're talking about? Um, but that's not what it ends up being about, and I won't testify as to what it was, because I think that would, uh, Mr. Mansfield probably object to it, but, but at the same time, so, uh, you know, so I'm thinking, you know, again, and I'm, my head is spinning again. And, okay, so now I'm in jail. And they take me, and they literally, okay, the jail has the elevator, goes up, they take me in. I remember getting booked, you know, kind of booked in, whatever the hell, you know, what the, whatever that is, where they, could, they do, they check in, whatever, right? But um, they do that, and, and this is, you know, I, I'm not going to say I haven't been to jail before. I've been to Key West Jail one other time, and it was for, Misdemeanors, right? Boat, boat charges. You know, it was nothing. I mean, I can't say it was nothing, but you know, it was misdemeanors. Um, but anyway, so thing is, is uh, they take me right to the back, right, and they put down all these these brown paper bags, and there's a bunch of guards around me, and they literally make me drop all my clothes right there on the bag, wow. and they put me in the black and white stripes, and then they put me in chains, head to toe. I mean, chains, you know, like chain, you know, chains. And they take me right to solitary, right? Now, again, I've been to jail before, right? Um, never for anything, 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 anything close to this. And um, the thing is, is, um, and I've never had an experience like it, you know, ever. And, but they take me there, they put me in solitary. And my mind is spinning. I can't even explain to you guys what it's like. You know, it's like, I, I just didn't know. I, look, I was a normal guy a second ago. And now I'm sitting in a jail cell and I'm, you know, being put in chains and man, everybody's, you know, people are telling me I'm a murderer, you know? Um, and so I'm in there and I'm in the, in the, in the solitary and solitary, solitary is weird. Um, it's 23. Uh, to the relevance of solitary. Well, I'm just telling the story. I mean, no, look, I you can tell me where to stop if you want. Well, um, sustain that objection. Yeah. I mean, okay. And I'm not exactly sure. What is relevant of anything? I'm just telling the story. I understand, Mr. Chucker, but... Uh... Um, anyway, so, uh, so yeah, I go to jail, and, you know, over the course of time, I mean, you know, it, it's, you know, I, I guess it's not really relevant as far as, you now. I meet my wife. Oh, I shouldn't say meet my wife. I, I've known her since we were kids, but um, she was the first person to contact me. You know, she was the first person to contact me when I got there, and I think it was, like, day seven, and uh, I was surprised. I was really surprised because um, we hadn't we hadn't seen each other in 33 years, you know. And uh, and uh, I can't even tell you. Um, but anyway, the thing is, is um, so yeah, you know, you know she uh, she comes, 
And by this point, uh, you know, I still didn't have a lawyer. Um, I was still in solitary. Um, I still don't know why I'm there. You know, I have no idea why I'm there, really. I mean, I know what they're saying. I don't, but I don't, I don't know. Objection, Judge, to this. I, I just. Okay. Um, I we're, we're rambling here. It's well, I, I don't I'm rambling, but I'm not sure how much uh, what we're hearing is not relevant. So. Um, Would you like me to? Well, if yeah. we'd like a little direction, we can excuse the jurors or. Yeah, I'll take direction. Hmm? I'll take direction. I mean. Oh, well. You know, it's like. Um, I just don't know what I understand. You want me I'm to just suggesting that it would be prudent, in my view, for just a moment or two to excuse the jurors. So, Mr. Tucker, your story in front of this jury today is you were drunk that day. Yep. Plastered. Yep. You're drinking highballs, red balls, what you call them? Fireball. Fireballs. What's a fireball? Um, I'm surprised you don't know, but okay. Uh, I don't know. That's why I'm asking you. No, no you're wrong. I was getting ready. I'm answering your question. Fireball is a, it's a whiskey, it's cinnamon whiskey. You know, it's very popular. That's why I said I'm surprised. And that's what you drank. That's what you were drinking the day that this all happened. Yes, sir. Got so drunk you went back to the warehouse, went upstairs, fell asleep. Knocked out. Knocked out. Yep. Now you were at the warehouse. You said you had been there on and off, right? Well, not necessarily on and off. I mean, I actually staying there. Uh, I think there was only two times, you know, there was the, during the hurricane and then there was the time period, you know, for CJ and Michelle. Other right, than that, were, other than that, I knew a couple of people who lived there and yes, man, I'd, I'd stop by there every once in a while. So you were, you were basically house sitting for CJ and Michelle. Yes, sir. But this is not a, this is not a apartment building, right? This is a, no. like a flop house. People are renting rooms no, or I hanging out in rooms. I wouldn't call it that. Um, and the thing is, is, you know, cause that's, 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 a, again, that's. It's a fairly derogatory term, and okay, I I just, say, I the question is very simple. It's not a rentable apartment no. building where you rent rooms. Okay, to put it this way, was the landlord doing something illegal? Sure. Did everybody else know that that, that, that it's they not weren't the question, supposed to be there? Mr. Tucker? Well, I don't the know question what you're is very, the question is very specific. Okay. Be okay. Specific. It's not a place where you rent apartments. Is that correct? Yes, it is because they had apartments there for rent. Okay. There were actual legitimate apartments for rent in this warehouse. And, 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 and that's why I was answering your question the way I did. Legitimate, no, the landlord was not. He was, man, he, he's subletting this, this, this thing, and mm -hmm. he built apartments in it. So you were yeah. house-sitting for your friends, right? Yes. And that's the only reason you were even staying at the place at that point in time? Yes. But you didn't have another place to live, right? You were going, you said No, cops. I mean, the thing is, yeah, I was actually saving up for a boat. I actually had money in my, in, in my pocket. Okay, I didn't ask you about money in your pocket. You were actually staying at a homeless shelter known as COPS. Yes, Is that I was. correct? Yes, I was. All right. So you didn't have a permanent home? No. And you were you did your share of partying during this time? Yes. Right? You said it was Fantasy Fest, and this yep. is what you do at Fantasy Fest. You really, you know, yep. tie one on for a couple of weeks, you said, right? Oh, yeah. Around Fantasy Fest time? Yeah, of course. It goes on for a while, right? Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. Again, yeah, probably every, probably every Fantasy Fest I've ever been to. Showing what's been previously marked as whiskey for identification. Do you recognize that? Sure do. And what is that? <laughs> that would be me. Is that how you looked at back in November? It sure is. Does it seem to move in, doesn't Is there any objection? Um, no, Your Honor. I'm just wondering what the relevance of what I looked like back then. But, uh, okay. but, uh, I mean, if there's an objection... No, it's okay. We can go ahead and put it in. All right. So, admit his dates next in order. 18. Thank you, Ms. Bell. So this is how you looked back in 2017, right? Mm -hmm. Pretty full goatee. Oh yeah, big full goatee. Big full goatee, right? Yep. Kind of thing that would be hard to cover if you were putting a mask on that stopped at the chin, right? I wouldn't say that. I actually wouldn't say that wouldn't because agree I, with that? I mean, again, that would be speculation. So I'll object. Okay, so you don't agree that it would be hard to cover if you just had a simple face mask? I'm not going to agree to that at all, because, man, again, I'm not, I'm not saying, I'm certainly not saying easier, it would, I'm not saying it wouldn't. Certainly easier to cover with a neck gaiter, right? Mm -hmm. You pull the neck gaiter up, it covers the mouth, the chin, everything. Well, the thing is, is uh, here's the thing, is that whole neck gaiter thing, I didn't know what one was until after I heard your client say it. Or, didn't I know shouldn't what say it, not your client, but whatever. Didn't know what a neck gaiter was? No, I didn't, actually, to be honest. So now you're living at this warehouse. You know Rory, Rory Wilson, don't you? Yes, I do. You guys are hanging out now and then, right? 
Yeah, probably. I Partying mean, like together? I, said, I don't know. You know, I'm like, again, I didn't go over there all the time because, I, again, April and I did not get along. So I'm not trying to hang out with her too much. April didn't like you? No, she did not. You didn't like her? No, I did not, actually. Now, did we, did we hang out sometimes? Sure. And I remember there's times we did party. You know, that was like, I remember one time we went downtown, you know, uh, Rory Wilson. Because, again, here's the thing is I remember this during the hurricane. Uh, they had, what was it, the, hog, uh, the hogfish. They Mr. Tucker, I'm going to cut you off, sir. There's no question pending. Did you hang out socially or not with April Walker and Rory no, Wilson? No, April Walker, I tried not to. Um, okay. And, you know, I'm not saying she didn't come looking for Rory a couple times, but, yeah. I tried not to, but Roy Wilson, yes, I did hang out with him on a, on a few occasions. And you so heard that out. Allie- one thing. Is that exhibit being published, or are you going to take it back to the... Oh, I've already clerk? published it, Judge. Okay, I already so we're okay. going to either put it on the podium, or let's bring it to the okay. clerk. Thank you. You heard the testimony, right? You heard that there was an allegation that you threatened April Walker. Oh, I've heard that testimony, but that uh, testimony wasn't true. So you didn't threaten oh, no. Wilson's I mean, pregnant, nine oh, months no. pregnant girlfriend. Oh, no. No, you actually no, no. felt bad for her because she was put on the ground during yes, the race. Yes, I did. I mean, look, even if I don't like somebody, you know, again, seeing them on the ground mm-hmm. in that position when she's eight months pregnant, yes, that's not cool. You know, that's bottom line. I didn't like her, but that doesn't mean you put her on the ground in that position. Now, you testified that you went up to CVS with Rory Wilson that night. Um, no, I did not. When did you and Rory Wilson go to CVS and the, for you to tell you the honest truth? Like you know, that was actually that was put to me by investigators. They said that, but um, again, I told you I was you know, I was drunk that day, and I'm sitting there and I tried to remember it. And man, I'm sitting there going, I don't remember doing that. But you and, just testified to this jury that you went to CVS to get c- cigarettes. Oh, I went to Tom Thumb Tom to get Thumb. cigarettes, okay. and it Tom wasn't with Thumb. Rory Wilson. It was with Travis. With Travis, right? You and Travis went. Let's so talk let's about get Travis. the story straight. You and Travis were acquaintances, right? Yes, we were acquaintances. Okay. Travis was staying at the warehouse as well, right? Yes, sir. Matter of fact, you and Travis were both staying upstairs in the warehouse, right? Yes, when I was staying in CJ and, Mich- uh, CJ and Michelle's room, yes. Travis was in another room upstairs. Yes, he was upstairs. But you got to remember, he also went to jail. So, I mean, he wasn't there for a second. So Right? But he came back about a week later, right? Uh, to be honest, I don't remember how long it was. I know I was at work when he went to jail. Let me ask you. Mr. Tucker, was Travis there the day of the raid? Um, that's the thing is, he wasn't there in the beginning, mm-hmm. right? Because, um, I mean, you know, he wasn't there. Was he there when they took you down and put you in the police car? No, he wasn't there for that. He was he there when there they took the, you He wasn't to... there for that part, that part of it, at least not that I know of, right? Was uh, he, he there when there. they took you off to jail? Um, was he there when I, no, because when I went to jail, I was at Cots. And when I went to jail, I wasn't, he, they didn't grab me from the warehouse. They grabbed me from cots. The night of the raid, they didn't take you down and then let you go. They did take me down and let me go, but that wasn't taking me to jail. That was taking me down and interrogating me all night. Okay. So the night they took you down to interrogate you, was Travis there when you guys left the warehouse to go down and be hold interrogated? On, on. Let me make sure I'm hearing this correctly. What? Uh, please repeat the question. The night of the raid. Right. Gotcha. When they took you down, not to jail, but to question you. Right. Gotcha. Was Travis at the warehouse when you guys left to go to the police station? I don't know. To be honest, I don't know. And how did you was, get to the police station? And now you I were, got, I got there you. in a squad car in handcuffs. Okay. You said that while you were in, this, after you got arrested, you were in jail and you got reacquainted with an old high school friend of yours. I thought that wasn't relevant. You just testified to it, sir. Okay, well, in that case, yes, I did. I, I, I'm going to ask you just to answer the questions if you could. And if there's a relevant objection, you can make it. Thank you. But you don't need to question me. Okay. This is a crime circus presentation. You said you were in jail. Yes. And you got reacquainted with this high yes. school wife or a girlfriend of yours who became your wife. Well, actually, to be, again, she wasn't my high school girlfriend. She wasn't, you know, she was a friend that I knew from when I was 14 years old. And, yes, I hadn't seen her in 33 years. And That's you guys it. ended up getting married, right? Yes, we did. And she is actually very wealthy, isn't she? Multimillionaires. I beg your pardon? Multi-millionaires. And you guys are, are you married today to her? Yes, I am. Going beyond, I'm sorry, but I, I cut him off of your objection. and I, I Okay, Judge, well, he just testified about his wife. He and, mentioned it and you touched upon within the scope, but I believe okay. this is beyond the scope. I have no problem was, talking about my wife. Okay. I understand, sure. but I, I do. All right, so now... 
You're not in jail the entire time waiting for your trial, right? No, that's not true. I was in jail for two years. And then you actually got out pending yeah. your trial? Two million dollar bond. Let's talk about Paula, your relationship with Paula Belmont. Okay. You guys, you just testified that you weren't great friends in the beginning. You just kind of knew of each other, right? That is true. She testified you'd never been to the treehouse, but that's not accurate, right? Because you testified you'd actually been well, there three times. I don't remember her ever testifying to that, <clears> but <throat> she may not have remembered it. It was one time. That's it. I thought you said three times. You'd been no, there. I've been there three times, but Paula, Paula, and she woke me up one time yelling at me. You okay. know, because, man, I wasn't supposed to be there, apparently. I don't know. But, man, the thing is, she woke me up and she was yelling at me. I don't even, I don't even know if she remembers it. And now, describe your relationship with Paula today. Paula's one of my best friends. One of your best friends? Yes. All right. Sierra, one and two. Do you recognize these photos? I sure do. And what do they depict? They depict me and Paula at the hospital when I'm trying to make her feel better and making funny faces at the camera. Is that when were, these, when were these shots taken? Very recently. Judge, at this time, I think the move in states exhibit S for identification. Any objection? Nope. So you said these were taken recently, like in the last two weeks? Actually, you want to know exactly which day? I, can, I think I can remember. Sure, go ahead. Um, it was the day that I actually you know, went over there to check on her because... She said, uh, was it, she said that, you know, she was, you know, her doctor said that it had taken a worse. It was the day before I came in here and asked for the motion. And then she leaned back with her, didn't she have some kind of an infectious disease or something? Hence the bodysuit. That she had no mask on, that's for sure. That's true. Take a, I was hanging out? Took a chance. I was trying to make her feel better. And you said she'd become one of your friends with her, right? Like I said, she's one of my best friends. Well, what's changed? Now you said you were not always friends and now you're best friends with her. What changed? Well, I don't know if you know the story about how that happened, but I'll, I'll go ahead and tell it to you if you want me to. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Paula was a victim in the crime, right? And now I am an accused murderer at that point, right? And here it is, is uh, when this all happened, that makes it so that I can't talk to Paula, right? I, I'm not allowed to communicate with her. That makes sense, right? Um, they had a protective order that immediately went in and I couldn't talk to her. Paula, she gets diagnosed with COPD, right? And, uh, and she, Paula, she, um, she actually files a motion with the court, right? Because she wants to, and this is, she goes on the press and she starts saying this on the press, right? She wants to apologize to me for her role in, you know, for her role in anything that they've done to me. That's what she says. So she's and the judge, apologizing the judge, to you. She, she wants to. She can't talk to me. Right? So she wants to. Now, you're aware in the beginning she couldn't ID the second person, right? Look, I, I'm, I'm aware in the beginning. Very simple question. You Look, are aware, yes or no, that in the beginning, when she was first spoken Mr. to, she could not. Mr. Tucker, you're listen to the to question, okay? six years ago. And it's man, a very what, simple and question. I thought then. Are you aware? Gentlemen, gentlemen, let, let him finish the question and you can answer. Yeah, let me answer it. Okay, he hasn't finished the question. Okay. Go ahead. Mr. Ask, ask away. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Are you aware that six years ago when she was first interviewed by the police, she could not ID the second person? Are you aware of that? Yes or no? I'm going to tell you I'm aware that she could not positively ID the second person, man, when, she, when this first happened. No. And she was able to identify... Corey, Wil Corey Wilson, but Roy Wilson, but not the second person, correct? Um, yes, she did not positively ID the second person. Well, she said she didn't get a good look at the second person, right? That's not true. She said that she was focused on Roy now, Wilson at the time, and I that object, the honest. second person. I object, Your Honor. She's asking me to go what I know from video and what I know from police reports now. You know, that's. To sustain the objection, there are varying statements that she's made. Yep. So. Um, at one point, she said it, but presumably you're aware of other statements. Right. Because, okay. uh, again, I watched all these videos and I read So let's go back stuff. to that first night when she's interviewed. She says she can't ID the second person, right? 
Didn't get a good look at it. Which, hold on. Excuse me. Which night are we talking about? Night of the crime when she's okay. being interviewed. Again, you're asking me to go to video. You're asking me to go to police reports, and that is hearsay. So are I'll you object. aware that she I'll was object. unable to identify the second person? Excuse me? Are you aware she was unable to identify the second person? At which time period? The night of the crime. Again, you're asking me to go to police reports. You're asking me to commit hearsay. Simple question, sir. So, objection. Going to overrule that objection. Okay. It's just your awareness okay. of one my point awareness, in time and one uh, statement. My awareness at the time, right? And if I can, and I'm going to have to remember this because the Lord knows I've gone over this a million times. So I'm going to have to think about my memory here. Um, at the time, as far as uh, even any statements by Paula, hold on a second. Because, okay, I was in jail when this first happened. I'm asking right? you, no, as no, you sit here, sir, you're Tucker, asking me to remember. I'm asking you as you sit here today, not where your mind was back then, as you sit here today. Okay. as I sit here today. Okay. Are you aware that she could not ID the second person on the asking, night it happened? Okay, and you're asking me to commit hearsay. I'm, I'm, I don't believe that's the case, so you, you oh, okay. can answer it. And okay. remember, you'll have the opportunity okay. for redirection. As, as I sit here today. Just let me oh, finish. Sorry. You'll okay. have the opportunity for redirect. Okay, thank so you. So if you, after this is finished, want to elaborate <clears throat> on certain things, you may. But in terms of succinct answer to this question, you do okay. need to give it. I'll give you a succinct answer to this question. Okay, it depends on the time period as far as Paula. As, you, as today, I could definitely tell you that Different time periods, she said different things. I can say that. I, and you're aware that the very night it happened, she did not identify the second person. The very night it happened, again, that's the only reason I would even remember this right now is because we've been going over it recently. Correct. And I'm going over it, and she had varying statements at that point. Well, you're certainly aware that at the perpetuated testimony, yes. she was able to say it wasn't you as the second person, I'm right? I'm also aware that she was, co again, coerced into making statements by police. So, okay. Didn't ask you about that, sir. Okay. Very simple question. Well, if you're you going to lead me. If you you're were gonna aware, gonna aware me. that during her perpetuated <laughs> testimony that you sat and watched, yes. you observed her adamantly yes. stating it was yes. Tucker's not the second guy, right? Yep, I sure did. That was four years after the crime was committed. And that was four about years, three years. That was four years after the crime was committed. Well, September of 20 would be and, about three years, right? Okay, somewhere in there. But here's the thing. And there's no question pending, sir. Here's, I'm asking the questions okay. you're answering. Okay. Go ahead. Okay, that's go, how this works. Okay, go for it. Ask me another question. I'll take any ones you got. Great. Good to hear it. Yeah. That's why I put myself up here. How do you know that that second assailant was not Tyrone? No, it's not, it's not Tyrone. Um, it didn't match Tyrone's height or frame. I saw them. I saw half of his body from the back. It it's not him width wise. It's not him height wise. It was not Tyrone's voice. I know Tyrone's voice. Now she testified that she had talked to your wife through Facebook. Did you also communicate with her through Facebook? No, I was not allowed. So you never had any communications with her? No, not on Facebook at that time. Have you had any? You saw her at McDonald's after the crime, right? Yes, but I was not under arrest at that point. I was not under a, a protective order at that point. Okay, but when you saw her at McDonald's, you guys had a conversation there, right? Yes, we did. And did you tell her anything about the crime when you were saw her at McDonald's? Um, you know, I told her what had happened to me about the police interrogating me. And she did ask me some questions. I remember that. I remember answering, you know, different questions as she asked them. I remember she told me her experience. She told me how horrible it was. I remember, like I said, sitting there feeling like, eh. you talk about feeling, oh, God, not sorry for somebody. That's the wrong way to say it. So you communicated whatever. with, is it fair to say you communicated with her at McDonald's? Yes. Now, is it your testimony today that you've not communicated her with her directly at all from that moment until today? No. When did okay. I say that? So tell us about those communications. You said you weren't okay. allowed to talk to her, right? Yes, sir. And, okay. I also said and when that did that end? I also said she filed a motion with the court to be able to talk to me. And that, yes, she was going on the press saying these things that she wanted to apologize to me. Judge Jones granted, granted that, that motion, and, and she was allowed to talk to me. And, and that's when, had, and now we you've are. You've had general communications okay, with her ever he, since. He, he was Sorry. still testifying. Sorry, I'm just telling you. No, him. I'm not talking to you. I'm saying if you weren't complete with your answer, go ahead. Yeah, I'm just, you look, there comes a point. Where Judge, <laughs> again, there's no question pending. Well, he was still answering the thank last you. question. Yeah, so thank go, you. Finish your answer to the last question. <sighs> Judge Jones granted the order allowing us to be able to talk. And that day, 
Yeah, I was in tears. Okay, so you got the in tears part out. The jury heard it. Yep. Okay? Yeah, thanks. All right, great. Let's move on. So you've talked to her, admittedly, since then. Oh, quite a bit. Quite a bit, yeah. right? Yeah, quite a bit. Do you remember her taking a trip to California? Vaguely, yes. She posted pictures of it, right? Mm. If I remember right, she posted pictures of Woody. Of who? Uh, she likes, uh, she likes uh, Woody from... I guess uh, I forget what the name of the movie is. It's um, some Disney thing, man. But she likes a character named Woody. Oh, Woody from Toy, Toy Story. I That's what it is. Thank okay. you. Yeah. One minute, please, Judge. All right. I'm not sure if we could talk at that time, though. No. Mr. Tucker, show me Mr. Mark mm -hmm. Tango 125 composite. Okay. Recognize these photos? Let's see. Uh, yes, they're from Paula Belmont's Facebook page, and the thing is, I don't think I don't think we were talking at that time. How do you know her from her Facebook page? Because I've seen her Facebook page. So, do you remember seeing these on her Facebook page? Yeah, I don't understand the relevance of them. So at this time, I think the movie was going to previously mark this tango one through five. Okay. Is there any objection? Um, again, I'd like to know the relevance of the pictures. Okay, you're objecting to yeah, relevance. relevance. Okay, so we'll have to have a bench conference then. Um, so come on, come on around. Thank you, sir. All right, so let's pick it back up. You're aware of her trip to California, right? Yes, I am. She took pictures with Woody, you said, right? I think she takes pretty much on every trip she goes on. Ever since that order was lifted, you've had pretty steady communication with her. Is that fair to say? Uh, fairly steady. Sometimes, man, more, sometimes less. Now, you talked about this friend, um, Big Somebody. What's his name again? Big Scott. Big Scott. Yep. Big Scott was staying at the warehouse with everybody? No, he was not. He was there that night, yes. But Which uh, night is that, sir? That would be, um, I guess, that would be the night of the crime. Because, uh, again, you know, like I said, I went, go get cigarettes with Travis, come back, and Big Scott is at the door. And so Big Scott, was he a friend of yours or an acquaintance? How would you describe him? Um, actually, he's, he's, uh, he's a friend, you know, and he was a friend of, you know, I think he was a friend of a couple people there. And at some point, are you aware of Big Scott telling you and Travis and Rory, I don't know what you guys are plotting, but I want nothing to do with it. Do you remember that comment? Uh, no. No? No. When did you first learn that Mr. Bonnet had been murdered? I told you that already. I told you that already. Okay, but you need. I didn't. Well, actually, I shouldn't say I. I shouldn't say I knew Mr. Bonnet got murdered at that point. I, at that point, the first time I heard anything about what ha, what had happened at the treehouse, and it wasn't even the treehouse. You know, they told me somebody got stabbed in the CVS parking lot. That's the first time I heard about it. So the way the way you heard about it, the stabbing yes. was alleged to have happened in the right. CVS parking lot. Right. The next time I heard about it, I was at the police station. Is that when you found out it was actually at this, this treehouse location? Yes. And that's when you were talking to Detective Pitcher, right? Uh, that would be Detective Pitcher, Danielle Malone, and Captain Phelps. Now, at some point, didn't you tell Detective Pitcher what you told this jury today, that you were not involved and that you were sleeping off, you were yeah. drunk and sleeping yeah. it off or something? Yeah, I told him, man, I told him the same thing. I couldn't remember much, man, from the night. And yes, I remember passing out. I remember waking up right. because I needed cigarettes and I went to, the, the, was it the Tom Thumb, and Travis went with me. And that's what you told Detective Pitcher, correct? Yes, it is. And you even told Detective Pitcher that just ask Travis, he'll back you up, right? I thought, again, I thought so. I didn't know anything was wrong. All right. Well, Travis didn't back you up, did he? No, he didn't. <laughs> Travis is Travis yeah, good clean and, and gave a statement to the police, didn't he? Um, yes, he did. And, okay. You know, it's just again, yes, no? Okay. Yes, he did. your commentary on it. Yes, he did. Do you remember when you saw Paula at McDonald's in this whole timeline? When, when did you run into her at McDonald's? The very next day? Was it two days later? Three days later? It was. It was. Let's see. Hold on. It would have been. Okay, because the raids, you know, if you want to call it that, whatever you want to call it. That happens on the 21st. Going into the 22nd is when I'm literally being interrogated all night. The next, that day, whatever that day is, that would probably be. But that would be the 22nd again. 
because it ends that morning. So, okay, 22nd. It would be on the 22nd. Okay. And let me ask you, Mr. Tucker, you were making pretty good money, right? 300 an hour to put these blue tarps up? Yeah, I was doing all right. What's the reason you hadn't gotten a place? You know, you were still living in these well, temporary again, places. I lived on a boat before, right? And as I testified, I was, you know, I was trying to save up for a new boat. There are going to be plenty of cheap ones around. But here's the thing is I don't like paying outrageous rents that are in Key West. I'd rather buy a boat and live on the water. You said you'd passed out that day drinking these fireballs, right? Yes, sir. What time in that, like what time, take us through that day, the timeline for that day. When were you drinking these fireballs? I know, look, I, that's like I said, I don't really remember the day that well. I remember, I remember drinking during the day. I do remember that. I don't even remember all who was there. I know there were other people that came in and out. I know I passed out somewhere along the lines. You know, but that, I mean, asking me specifics, especially six years later, I couldn't tell you. So you started drinking these red balls. Was the sun still up? That would be fireball, sir. And fireball. Yes, the sun was still up you know, while I was drinking. That, that is true. All right. Do you remember getting out of bed and going right to the partying phase, or did you do something else before no, it started I, I, that day? I already testified to that. I told you that. Okay. Well, I'm asking again. Okay. Um, I appreciate I, you reminding me. I'm just saying is I went to, okay, I woke up at some point in the time, and I went and got cigarettes at the Tom Thumb. And I came back, and Travis was with me. And yes, Big Scott was there. I told you what happened after that. But I'm talking about earlier in the day. When you got out of bed that day, did you go do something or did you just start drinking? No, actually, I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure. Because uh, if I'm drinking during the day, I had a day off. So, you know, if I'm drinking during the day, I had a day off. So, yeah, I would imagine I had the day off. And do you remember passing out that day? Yeah, I um, remember passing out. I don't know if that's a, a proper term, but no, okay. I don't remember passing out. I remember, don't remember passing out? I remember I passed out somewhere along the lines, but yeah, I don't, it, I, I guess I'm, being too you know, literal here, but I remember, yes, I went to sleep sometime during the, you know, during the day and night. I don't know. And do you remember what time you woke up? No. Day or night? Night. Police cars already out and about? Police and cars were already up there on Laurel Avenue. I could see, because, okay, I could see the lights from the Tom Thumb parking lot. I could see all the lights that were up on Laurel Avenue. Do you know how many times Mr. Bonham was stabbed? Um, at this point, Yes. So now, I guess your story is that this is all being pinned on you, right? You didn't well, do this. You, huh, you would know better than anybody, Mr. Mansfield. Oh, would I? Yes. But I wasn't there. You were. So why don't you tell me? Are you telling me this was all you, pinned on you? I hate to tell you oh, again, Mr. Mansfield. It's no, very simple, Mr. Tucker. Is your that story I was today? You have no proof is your that, story right, today sir. that you were? Sir. This is all being made up and that you didn't do this. Yes, this is it. That, that is my story all okay. day. And I've so, said it since day one. So this is just the big Bubba system going after you to pin this on you. Yeah, and Mr. Mansfield, I, again, I can answer that. You know, would you like me to answer it? Would you like me how, to, to tell you how I know that? You said you didn't want to go into that. Well, you know what? Let's not go into that because I'm pretty sure what your opinion is has no factual basis to it. Really? So, in other words, this is your theory that this is all being pinned on you by the oh. Big Bubba system. Your Honor, I, I would uh, I would object unless he wants to let me go into the things he doesn't want to go I'll, into. I'll sustain that last question. He's <laughs> argumentative. I have nothing else. Do you feel confident that it was not Tyrone? Yes, yes. absolutely. And I have said that from from day one or night one, however you want to phrase it. Thank you so much for watching this special presentation, ladies and gentlemen. I really do appreciate it. This was episode one of Innocent Lives Matter, my brand new series. Please let me know down below, how do you feel about this? And smash the thumbs up button too. So, think about it. The surviving victim, Paula, says Tyrone's innocent. What more do you need to know? If the victim of a crime says the alleged perpetrator didn't do it, we must believe them. We can't just allow governments to go on witch hunts because they feel like it. That's out of control. That's sick. They need to let this man go. And the judge or the state has the power to do so. But they just won't stop. They're too determined to win. Even though in this case, winning for them would be wrong. And did they know that? They've seen the same evidence I've seen. So they know the truth. Tyrone's innocent. Please pray for Franklin Tyrone Tucker and type out a little prayer down in the prayer box below. Thank you. Always keep fighting for truth and justice, and please help spread this video like wildfire. 
more people need to become aware of this case and other cases just like it. Because Tyrone's not alone. There's a lot of innocent people in prison and a lot more that are going to go to prison. But if there's anything that I can do about it, I'm going to. Which is why I will always fight for truth and justice, and you should too. I mean, seriously, just think about it. Imagine being arrested for a crime you did not commit, and that crime is actually the worst crime you can commit on Earth. You claim your innocence since the very first day, and now it's six years later. You defend yourself at trial without any attorneys, and the jury comes back hung. And then the state immediately says they're going to try the case again. That's a nightmare. And this is Tyrone's real-life nightmare. And yeah, a lot of people wonder, why did Ty defend himself? Why didn't he just get a real high-powered attorney? Well, a lot of attorneys are worthless. To them, it's just a 9-to-5 job. To Ty, this is his life on the line. And nobody cares about this case more than Ty. His life literally depends on a not guilty verdict. And getting a not guilty in the United States court system is almost impossible. Very few people have ever pulled that off. Will Tyrone Tucker be one of the first? Pray, pray, pray. And then pray some more. Because manifestation is real. And we all collectively need to start manifesting better things. More positivity. We need to manifest the outcome of this case to be not guilty. Ty's going home. Ty deserves to sail the world in his little sailboat. And maybe if he is found not guilty, we can do a GoFundMe and he can get a really big sailboat. Because here at Crime Circus, we actually care about other people. To make a long story short, I think the investigators in this case had tunnel vision. They had their eyes set on Ty and they just could not take their eyes off no matter where the actual evidence pointed. This was a simple case. Rory and Travis. And that's all there is to it. The surviving victim Paula says there were two people. There was no need for a getaway driver. Three people doesn't make sense. That's just complicating the case with the detective's fantasies. And sometimes fantasies can get a little carried away in Key West, can't they? This is seriously scary because this could happen to any one of us. Me, you, or any one of our loved ones. Anyways, if you're more interested in this case, please check out the links down below and you'll find Tyrone's interrogation and his co-defendant's interrogation too. Look, like I told you in the beginning, he didn't freaking do it, man. And you know that's true. Seriously, it's sus to us the way we see police acting in that freaking video. Anyways, thank you so much. Please consider supporting this channel. There's links down below. There's a merch shop. There's donations. You can become a member. And of course, I'm on Patreon. Please spread this video. Please share this video with your friends and family. Raise more awareness. We need to go viral, and we need to go viral right now. Until next time, remember to stay safe out there because you know it's a dangerous world.